Welcome back to Cake With It. I'm Jerry and today, let me show you today. There is a rat in my cheese. Wait, is that a rat or a mice? <laughs> mice is multiple, so it would be a mouse, a mouse. or a rat if it's in What he said. But I don't mind. And I hope you love cheese and you're not afraid of mice. I use brown fondant and I'm gonna shape it as the mice head. And then I'll add the details later. I'm gonna grab more brown fondant and I'm gonna put it together and shape it into the form of a mice. And I'm gonna do two of those because I need two and then one with just the head. And I only want the shape right now because I'm going to add the eyes and the ears and the nose later. Next, I'm going to roll a little fondant so that I create a long tail. And I'm going to make three tails. Even though I have two bodies, I'm going to need three tails. I roll two more little fondants and I'm going to create the ear and I'm going to shape it as best as I can with my fingers. And I'm going to trim away any extra with my X-Acto knife. And again, I need to create three pairs of ears. For the eyes, I'm going to use a pearl candy and I'm going to do that to both my whole Rex, mice, and then the head that's going to stick out of the cake. And with a marker, I'm going to color in the pupil and again it's food grade marker. Then I'm going to roll pink fondant and attach it as a nose. Finally, I'm going to attach the ears to all of them. So I created six ears and I'm going to attach them with water. For the cake, I baked a spice cake on a 9 inch cake pan and you could do any flavor you like but I decided to do spice cake and then I'm going to trim around it because I know that my block of cheese that I want to do has to be kind of dome shaped from the top so I'm going to keep the dome shape and simple syrup my cake. Next I'm going to crumb coat my cake. And again, if you want to learn how to make my Italian buttercream recipe, I will put a link on the top of the video. And it's important that you crumb coat the cake before you do your final coat. And then you chill your cake. I don't know if you noticed, but we have this now. Pretty cool. So don't forget to chill your cake. Chill, 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 chill your cake. I feel like I need 10 more of these. <laughs> A chill shirt that has like LED lights. And you can have it for $49.99. <laughs> and after chilling, you do your final buttercream coat. I tinted some fondant with tons of ivory, yellow, and a hint of brown to give it that cheese outer layer coat. I'm going to roll it, cover my cake, and then use a fondant smoother to smooth around and make sure my cake looks as smooth as possible. With my sharp X-Acto knife, I'm going to trim the excess amount of fondant and I'm not going to focus on the detail just to get rid of the extra fondant. Then I'll go back and I'll trim around the edges to make sure it's even and smooth and finish it off with the fondant smoother. So this is where it gets weird but bear with me. I'm going to slice, yes, slice my cake into a nice big chunk Piece to pull it out and I'm going to buttercream the inside to get it ready for the next part. I tinted another piece of fondant with just ivory and yellow not brown because I want it to be lighter kind of Swiss cheese and I'm going to roll it out long enough. I'm going to measure 
the inside of my cake to make sure it covers all the way and I'm going to cover it with my fondant and then smooth out the inside. With my X-Acto knife, I'm going to trim just a large portion of it first and then I'll go back and then trim very gently the edges making sure it's nice and evenly cut. You don't want to do everything at once or else your fondant will tear. Now to make it look like Swiss cheese, I'm going to use my round fondant tool and I'm going to dip it a little bit in cornstarch so it doesn't stick to the fondant and I'm going to use a small side to make little indentations on the cheese cake, <laughs> the cheesecake and then I'm going to rotate and use a larger part to make bigger indentations and to get rid of any extra um, cornstarch left over on your cake. I have a little secret that now you know. And you wipe down any excess cornstarch with this thing. Now you gotta make sure it's clean and it's brand new. You don't want snot coming out of that. You know, cake decorators use any tool. We don't have specific tools, so we should call this the. What should we call this? This should have a name. What should we call it? Uh. Flour blower? Cornstarch? Cornstarch blower. <laughs> this is one of my main uh, crazy tools that I use around and you blow the fondant because you don't want to blow on fondant with cornstarch you use this. We should have a whole line of like hardware tools. I have rulers which you know school kids use it. I have measuring tape you buy at the like Home Depot or something. And now we're going to Babies R Us for our cake needs. And you can buy yours for $49.99. <laughs> you also have the level. Yeah, and the level, which I bought at like a Hobby Lobby store or something. So these aren't typical cake tools, but we got to work with what we work, you know. It's all about creativity. Just make sure it's brand new and you label it so no one uses it. And now for the piece that I took out of the cake, I'm also going to buttercream it and chill it. Then I'm going to use leftover fondant that I had and I'm going to cover the outside part. And again, I will trim the outside first, any large hanging piece, and then I'll go back and then I'll trim around the edges to make it look nice and neat. And the exact same method I used with the rolled fondant, I'm going to create indentations, big and small, for the little piece too. And then I'm also going to use my small fondant roller to create a bigger piece right in the center of the cake just to give it a more genuine look. Now I'm going to add the slice on top of the cake facing outward so it looks like the piece of cheese is on top. I'm going to add my first mice and then the top one. And I added a piece so it looks like the cheese was stuck to him. I grab a very thin straw and I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm going to use a brush and brush the back of the rat or mice head and I'm insert the straw and then attach that to one side of the cake so it looks like the rat is popping out mice and then the other piece I'm going to attach it to the tail and again I'm going to put water in it as a glue and I'm going to attach that to the back side so it looks like it's popping out. And time to cut the cake the moment we've been waiting for it and make sure you follow me on snapchat because sometimes i post previews of what other cakes i have or i'm working on currently and don't mind to stay for the cake porn <laughs> And 
And I'd have to say that this is one of the easiest cakes I ever made. It looks complicated, but go ahead and give it a try. It's very simple. So don't forget to comment what other cake you want to see made, like and subscribe to my channel, and share the video with all your family and friends. Help us get to 100 subscribers. I know I'm not aiming that high, but let's get at least 100 and that's our first goal, or 100,000 views. There you go, that sounds better. And don't forget to chill. Just chill, take the day off and chill, tell them Jerry told you so.